Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how I made this sci-fi visual effect. So let's get started. I'm going to import our footage into Adobe After Effects and I'm going to import it into a new composition. Okay, so I think that looks fine. Uh, we need to do a little bit of color change. Maybe we can increase the contrast a little bit. So let's go into effects and import the Lumetri color into our footage. Let's expand the basic correction and uh, increase the contrast a little bit and try to add some sharpness into it by going into creative. You get the sharpen option, just increase it and it will add, make it a little bit sharper so we can add more trackers into it and the track will be perfect. So yeah, I'm going to slightly increase the highlights a little bit and I think that looks fine to me. Okay, so let's right click and create, click pre-composition. And first of all, let's check the settings. Yeah, it's 29.97 frame rate. That's fine. Let's check for the footage also. I'm just checking it. It's not important, but I'm just checking it out, how it looks like. So I think, yeah, 29.97, that's it. Okay. So right click, click pre-composition and click. Okay. So now it's time to motion track the camera. In order to do it, let's click tracker and just, just go ahead into windows. If you don't have a tracker, just turn the tracker on and it will show up here. Click tracker and click track camera to start motion tracking the motion of the camera. So just go into advanced and click detailed analysis to track more features in your scene and it will be more accurate than the normal track. So let's wait for this. Okay, so after motion tracking, after analyzing and solving the camera, this is what we got here. We got 0 0.7 and let's increase the track point size so we can see it. So if you plate that they're sticking into where they're supposed to be, and I think that's a good sign for us. Uh, now it's time to create some solids. So let's select those by laser selection. Uh, now that one maybe, I'm gonna go ahead and select those. Maybe I'm gonna right click. Yeah, I'm gonna right click, create solid in camera. If you plate, I think it's sticking in there and this is what I wanted. Let's select some of them from here. Right click, create solid. Yeah, I'm just creating so many solids so I have a clear idea where to put objects. So I'm trying to add it uh, so much like maybe here, right, right click, create solid and it will create it here. Maybe I'm going to create one of it uh, here. Maybe no, not here. Maybe oh, no, I think not that one. But yeah, I'm just trying to find the best part to add motion tracker. Okay, so yeah, that one creates solid. Uh, yeah, what, why I'm doing that? Because if you export this into Blender, you will have a clear idea where to put objects. And we might use it for shadow catching also because they are sticking into the ground and this is what we wanted. So let's go in the timeline a little bit forward and just go ahead and select some of the trackers that we want. I'm going to select those tracker, right click, create solid and it will create a solid for us. Yeah, we can play it and see which one is where and okay i think maybe we can right click here and create solid here and let's just play it and maybe right here right click create solid and maybe no not right here maybe i'm just gonna play it and see where i can put another one maybe right here at the top here just 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 select some of the trackers here by laser select and right click create solid just play it and I think it is sticking into there and this is what we wanted. Let's select some of them right here and create solid also. So we have like an idea of where to put objects. Okay, so maybe I can create another one here, but I don't think it will stick up there because like After Effects doesn't have like a great system for motion tracking, but the feature I like about After Effects is it, it's like doing everything automatically. You don't have to tweak around so many things, but sometimes it becomes a problem because you can't tweak. So uh, for now, this situation is going to work, but like for every complex scene, it's not going to work. You can use PF Track or Blender for motion tracking, but right now it's like a simple track. So that's why I just using After Effects for, for quick stuff. And I think that the solid are sticking in there and this is what I wanted. Um, yeah, let's just let's just see what we can do here. Let's select everything, go into File, go into Script, and click Export Composition Data. If you don't have that option, I'll put the link to the script in the description. Download the script, install the script file, and you will also get the same option. Just click it, 
and browser location just name it to something that you want click save and click export it will export the data as a json file which we will be able to import into blender later on so let's open up blender 4.2 and let's see how we can import this data into so let's go ahead and click somewhere and click a and delete every single sheet in the viewport and let's go ahead into the output settings just change the frame rate to 29.97 and go into file click import and click uh after effect composition data it's actually an add-on i will also put the link to the add-on in the description you can install it so let's import the json file and as you can see we have the json file in blender let's select the front plane and delete it because it's actually the footage uh, but it, we don't have footage right now. I'm just going to delete it. So select everything and move all the keyframe by just one frame forward a little bit. And yeah, as you can see, it's replicated into a 3D viewport in Blender. And this is what we wanted. Okay, so I think that looks good. And uh, if you want to have a brief understanding on how to import the data, you can watch some of my other tutorial that I did for motion tracking in After Effects. Okay, so let's select the camera and just go ahead. Yeah, I think let's just go ahead into background image and click add image and click movie clip and click open. Just go ahead to the directory and click the footage and click open clip. And now as you can see the footage is loaded and you will be able to see that all the plants are sticking into the ground and this is what we wanted. You can test it around, you can export this data again as an input for file to check it out. You can also add some other object from Blender like cube or Sozane head to just check it out and yeah i'm gonna add um maybe a cube an empty cube let's call it up appropriately and just move it somewhere right here just scale it up and rotate it like that okay so um now i'm gonna go ahead select all those trackers here by hitting control and then finally, okay, so let me select them again. Control and select, like select all the tracker first, then the empty, then hit control P and keep transform, which means that it will connect all the empties into that one empty that we can like move around just to anywhere we want. So right now, as you can see, we have parented everything into that one empty. Uh, so we can now place it perfectly. So I'm gonna slightly rotate it to align it with the ground here. And yeah, uh, let me just go into every axis and try to align it with the ground and try to move it. So let's just rotate it on the axis like that. And move it slightly. And yeah, if you go into camera view and play the video, this is how it looks like. And this is what we wanted. So let's just go ahead and set the ending to something like that. And yeah, that looks fine to me. Okay, so now we can create any object in a 3D viewport that we want. So let's just select this one and let's create a cube here. Let's just scale it up to something like that and move it towards Y axis. We can slightly move it up on Z axis and yeah. Okay, so let's just move it towards Y axis to check it out. And as you can see, this is how it looks like. Yeah, the cube is sticking into the ground. And I think that's look fine to me. Yeah, that's looking good. Now you can add a Susan hat into it or any object that you want. But actually, we're trying to create a little bit of science fiction thing, which is not really realistic. But yeah, it looks cool, even though it's not realistic. So yeah i think that looks fine so i found this this those model on sketchfab i will put the link to all of them in the description yeah all the robot model all the stuff by great artists yeah i will put and credit to them also so yeah they're amazing like i found so many robots model sci-fi model and yeah you don't need to worry about it because i'm going to put the link to collections to models to everything i used in this video so like i found so many stuff on sketchfab that are really good and amazing i'm not going to explain one of one by one because there are a lot so it will be a longer video that's why i'm just making it a little bit faster so you can see what i'm doing but i will also put the link to all the model that i use in this video so you can later on check it out and see how you can make something cool with those model yeah i think i found so much detail model and i love them so yeah that looks fine to me downloading gltf glb format fbx format blend format all the format that, that is possible for me 
And yeah, I'm just downloading so many crazy models from Sketchfab. Like they're really good. They're really detailed. They're amazing. You can also check it out. Okay, so back in the blender, and now it's time to delete the cube, the def not the default cube, but just a normal cube. Okay, so now it's time to import all the model that we just downloaded, and yeah, you can also find them in the description. Also, let's select one of the plane and go into edit mode. Let's select those vertices and just move them. Okay, so let's go into the z-axis and try to move it on a z-axis like that. Maybe that one also. Slightly move it on x-axis so it fits like that. Maybe select like this one and that one and move it towards Z axis, something like that. And let's select that one. Let's select uh, both of them and hit Control J to join them. And go into edit mode, select those vertices together, like by hitting Shift and selecting them and click F to fill in the gap. And yeah, now it's time to join all of them. So let's select this one and go ahead just select these two one also. Maybe we can select this one and hit Control J to join it. So we have that one model here. That looks fine to me. And yeah, that, that's looking good. Okay, so let's select this one, that one, and let's just slightly move it toward that direction. Maybe we can slightly move it up here. I'm just trying to make a very sharp, you can say a very rough mask for the shadow catcher here. So it's not an accurate thing, but just trying to move them randomly so they fit in there and they look fine to me. Let's select both of them and hit Ctrl J to join them. Let's select those vertices, select those vertices also and hit Ctrl J to join them. Sorry, to hit F to fill in the big gaps. And let's select those one also and hit F to fill in the gap. Yeah, that looks fine to me. Let's select that one and that one and that. Hit F to fill. And yeah, that's that's how you have you have to make a shadow catcher for this situation. It's not perfect for every situation, but right now we can use this trick to just do it. Just move it towards those X's. And yeah, I actually changed the view transform to local, so that's why uh, the axes are also moving with vertices. Okay, so let's select those and hit F to fill in the gaps. Let's just go ahead and hit Control R to add a lobe cut here. Select that one, also those other vertices and hit F to fill. Select those one also and hit F to fill in the gaps. And okay, so. Let's select those, also that one and this one. Hit F to fill in the gap. Let's just move it towards X axis. Let's just hit Control R and add a loop cut here. And just move it towards Z axis like that. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to trying to explain everything that I want to do. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So let's just move it. Maybe I don't like it. Let's hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, because I didn't like that. So that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and select these vertex. Maybe try to move it on Z axis, on X axis too, and just move it like that. Also select this one and move it towards here. So we have enough place for shadow catching. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and select all those vertices and hit E to extrude on Z axis like that. If you play it, as you can see, the, the ground is sticking in there and this is what we wanted. Yeah, let's just uh, let's just extrude this vertex here. And let's select all those four vertices and hit F 
to fill in the gap and this is what we wanted so if you play it as you can see the plane is actually sticking into the ground and this is what we wanted so i think that looks fine to me and if you play it this is how it looks like so now i think we are good to go like uh, we can add more details into it if you go into solid just go ahead and try to like merge another another planes into it so let's just go ahead and select both of them and hit ctrl j to join them let's select those vertices also and hit f to fill in the gaps here let's go ahead and hit e on z axis to extrude this vertex select all those four vertices and hit f to fill hit e again select all those hit f again to fill in the gaps so this is how it looks like and i think that looks fine to me maybe i can select those vertices and try to move it into sides uh something like that let's select that one move it up here let's select this one and try to move it here let's just play it and see what we got here and yeah i think that looks fine to me like you know that's that looks good uh yeah they're sticking in there and this is what i wanted in my life so yeah let's just go ahead and select those one also try to rotate it to fix the rotation a little bit on different axes try to move it on x try to move it on z to fit in there and yeah this is the main goal to be like doing that try to move it a little bit down slightly moving to x axis and let's just go ahead and select both of them and hit Control j to join them going to edit mode try to move it here try to move it there and also try to move it slightly there so maybe slightly down here and maybe you can select this part and try to move it up here maybe slightly that one and slightly that one to that direction so just moving it slightly let's select all the four vertices and hit f to fill in the gaps so we have just one plan standing up there with the full potential of both the plans actually sticking into there and this is what we wanted we can extrude it on backward a little bit but i don't think it's a good idea but i'm just trying to make it but yeah that looks fine to me okay so okay that looks good let's just import uh, an fbx file on uh, the jet model i will also put the link to it it is done by a great artist i forgot the name but i will surely put the link to his model it's amazing it's very detailed the texture are really good and let's just move it a little bit up and try to scale it yeah i think we're gonna select uh one of the mesh and i'm just trying to watch it what i can do with the mesh but i think i'm going to join all of them together so we just have one mesh to deal with we don't have so let's select everything and hit ctrl j to join them into one mesh and hit a slash to go out of the local view okay so let's just go ahead and rotate it on the z-axis scale it up like that and try to move it into different axes let's just scale it slightly and just try to move it here just a little bit and try to scale it up maybe we can move it upward a little bit okay if you go into wireframe as you can see the this this is sticking into there and this is what we wanted so now we can go ahead and scale it slightly up and try to move it up so it's actually staying on the plane so it's actually staying on the surface and which means that it will stick there but okay so as you can see the camera is clipping through this we don't actually want this to be so when it moves forward we're gonna animate this model like it's gonna go off like it's gonna take off from the ground and it will um it will make the space empty for the camera to move there that's what i want okay so how to do it in order to do it we can just go ahead and yeah we can try different stuff here but i'm just finding a best frame to move this thing upward a little bit maybe a frame number 200 and uh, maybe like i'm gonna start animating these on frame number 200 and hit i to add a keyframe just go into frame number 250 
try to move it up a little bit and try to rotate it on the axis just slightly not so much not so fancy just hit i so as you can see it's slowly going up a little bit just go for, to frame number 300 try to move, rotate it a little bit and try to move it towards z axis just try to rotate it a little bit and try to just move it upward like that try to move it uh, in the front direction and hit i to add a keyframe here this is how it looks like but i think i need to try to a little bit rotate it on that um, direction on maybe like which direction i think it's y direction yeah for local okay so if you play it this is how it looks like but i think the takeoff it isn't really good so maybe i could change it because like uh, it's a little bit like look doesn't look really good so this is how it looks like but i think i'm gonna go ahead and set it to linear okay so let's just play it and i think the takeoff isn't really good so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna go ahead and play it again okay it's move up a little bit slower then a little bit faster in the end but i think the faster effect is really fast that i don't like it so i think i may delete the final keyframe but i don't know what i'm supposed to do right now yeah i'm gonna delete it the final keyframe so let's just move into frame number 334 slightly move it up on zx and hit i to add a keyframe here so now it's i just wanted to move it slowly up let's set this to busier yeah i think that looks fine to me because it slowly goes up and slowly like take off from the ground and this is what i wanted okay so if you play it as you can see this is how it looks like and when it moves on the jet also goes ahead and just rotate and move up and this is what i wanted so let's just go ahead and uh, turn on the plan again to see how it looks like so let's just go ahead and import some other asset let's just save the file import let's go and import uh, an fbx so as i already told you that i will put the link to all the model i downloaded from sketchfab so it's imported right now let's scale it up slightly let's just hit slash to go into local view so we can control it a little bit better so as you can see there are so many like uh, empties so i'm gonna go ahead and select everything deselect the armature and hit alt p to clear the parent let's just go ahead and select one of the objects and hit ctrl j to join it let's just delete all those empties here uh it will not be created if you just download the original version of a model from sketchpip but i actually downloaded a glb file which is not an original file it is a converted file so it will have some problem but if you're downloading an original file it will it will not have that problem so don't worry about it so i'm just recording it in case you download the glb file and you don't know how to remove empties because there will be a lot of empties okay so let's just go ahead and uh, just move it towards y-axis try to move it on x-axis maybe we can try to just move it slightly on y-axis like that and trying to move it towards uh, slightly rotated on z-axis move it towards x-axis here slightly scale it up maybe slightly move it towards x move it to, to a little bit up try to move it a little bit on x-axis just move it a little bit up like that select everything and hit delete for the plane that we had the blackish plane there i hit ctrl z again to undo the stuff but i selected it and try to move it towards y-axis and try to fit it in there just just not go very crazy but i just want to have a little bit of um you can say a little bit of floor for the for the for this model so yeah i think that looks fine to me under track we can turn it on or off okay so let's just try to move it on x-axis like that and yeah this is how it looks like and i think that looks fine to me okay so we can import some more model into it that we want so let's just go ahead and try to import some other model in here to see what we got here 
just try to scale it up on the axis a little bit not so much and yeah this is how you can import a 3d model into blender and i think this way easier than you think like right now i'm just fixing some problem that i have with the model you don't need to worry about it because it will it will not show up in yours but in my case i sometime like messed up things up so that's why i, I just gotta fix things so yeah, try to rotate it a little bit to fit the surface of the plan so it's actually look good. Yeah, let's select the surface and hide it so we can see what is going on. Okay, so I think that looks fine to me. Maybe slightly rotate it like that. Just slightly move it. Maybe slightly just on y-axis just a bit. Not so much. Okay, so let's go ahead and import some other model. Go go ahead into camera view and see how does it looks like. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and click Shift and D to duplicate and try to rotate on ZN 180 degree. So we can have like, oh, okay, so, so sorry. I'm going to go ahead and delete the model because it's actually an instance, which means that if you hit Alt and D, it will just create an instance. But right now, I hit shift in D to duplicate it so I can just move this object. Okay, I think that looks fine to me. Just slightly scale it on X axis and try to move into camera view. Let's just play it and see how does it looks like. And if you play it, that's how it looks like and I think that looks fine to me. Yeah, that's looking good. If you play it, it takes off and uh, yeah, we can import some other model. Let's go into model, first save the file and import some 3D model from Sketchfab. Let's just import this futuristic sort of things here. It's exactly the same deal. Let's delete the armature, select all the geometry, select one active geometry and hit Control J to join it and hit Alt P to clear transformation. Okay, so let's just go ahead so I'm just going to go ahead and import it into here. I'm just making it faster so you don't have to waste so much time watching my shit going on. Like it is exactly the same thing that I did for the other model. But I'm just trying to place it on a perfect position where like things doesn't look really obvious and thing looks fine. Okay, so let's just import some other model and place them wherever we want. I tried it here and I think that looks fine. Maybe right here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and import another model. And place it somewhere right there. Let's import another model also. Put it in there and yeah, this is what we wanted. Okay, so now as you can see, we have imported so many models into Blender and they're already looking really good because we have added some density into it. And this is what we wanted. Okay, so that's how it looks like. And we're going to try to move it slightly on X axis so it's not clipping with the border of the cube. And okay, so let's select the cube. Let's create a new material and set this to a holdout. Let's just go into material view and see what we got here. Okay, so that's how it looks like. Okay, so I think that looks fine to me personally because I liked it. Let's select the jet model, split the window, go into shader editor. So let's just go ahead and click Control shift t Go into its folder, go into texture, just select everything and import it into Blender. So right now it doesn't work. Uh, maybe we can fix some of the stuff. Let's just go ahead and click uh, the this icon here. Let's just go back a little bit, go to texture. We're going to click best color. And as you can see, it is imported successfully. And I like it so much. Okay, so I think that looks fine to me, like the moment of the camera is perfect, the other stuff are going well, now you can add so many stuff into it to see what you get in the result, in the final result. 
so let's just go ahead into solid weave and control s and save the file okay so i imported some other model into it also like the robot model and i will try to import some other model also because i think if you have many model it will make the scene very dense and it will look good so i just found so many model online and i just try to import them one by one i'm not going to explain them in very detail because it's going to take so much time to explain but right now i'm just putting them into 3d scene and try to kid wish them around the subject and try to add so much detail into it but i think it won't look really good right now uh because we didn't set the any lighting for it so let's just import the obj file that we downloaded the unsc infinity yeah as i already told you twice that i will put the link to all the model in the description so you don't have to worry about it okay so let's just scale it down a little bit and just try to move it a little bit up trying to move it like that and um, just try to rotate on y-axis let's just go into solid mode and try to move it towards x-axis Let's just move, go ahead and try to move it like that. Maybe we can go into camera view, just slightly move it up like that. And we're going to try to move it towards the axis, something like that. Let's go into solid and try to rotate on Y. Uh, let's just hit shift D and duplicate on the axis. Try to rotate on Y and 180 degree something like that also do the same for it so let's just see what we got here okay so i think that looks fine to me let's just move okay so let's just go ahead and uh, go into edit mode maybe we can slightly slightly move the vertices to perfectly mask out the building so it's not actually making problem for us later on um okay so let's just go ahead and try to move it uh, and extrude it on x-axis like that to fit the wall here because we want to cast shadows into it from other model that's why we did this let's select both of the model and just try to move it towards y-axis just a bit and try to rotate it on z-axis and 180 degree maybe Let's just hide these one and okay. So let's just go ahead and try to hide. As you can see now, those model are sticking into there and this is what we wanted. So I duplicated the model and put it on the other side. So we add a little bit of details into it. I also duplicated the other model and put it in the background for a little bit of time. I imported some other 3D model from Sketchfab that I will surely put the link there and just try to change it a little bit and try to place it on a perfect spot that we wanted and this is the whole thing that we did for this video like from ground up uh, from ground to like going up on this thing it looks fine to me like with time it changed and it evolved so much that I liked it and if you look at this that looks fine to me Maybe I can try to duplicate this model here and put in somewhere right here and maybe just go ahead into material, just, slide, just slightly move it. Maybe I can go ahead and select all those vertices, Control L and hit X and delete those one. Let's select this one, Control L and delete. Okay, so let's select this one and hit Control L to select the link and click X and delete the vertices. If we play it, as you can see, everything is sticking in there, and this is what we wanted. Okay, so let's go into solid mode and see what we got here.
Okay, so I'm just checking it out if it have like the perfect motion and I think that looks fine to me. Personally, I like it, but I don't know about you. If you don't like it, just go ahead and start it again and try to change settings there that you want to change. Okay, so I think that looks fine to me. And if you just just turn on all the plan here, the shadow catcher, the holdout and stuff like that, and turn on the extra and floor here, we'll be able to see it. So actually, let's go into render and see how it turns out. Actually, everything looks really dark and doesn't look really good. So let's fix this. So right now, I, I went into render, but it's actually calculating it for a long time because it, on the default, it is EV render. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead into... Um, maybe I'm just going to go ahead, select both of the model, just move it up here. Okay, so let me just go ahead and select the hierarchy here. Just move it to a new collection for the sci-fi objects. I'm just trying to move it. Okay, so now it's time to open up a new window. Go into Shatter Editor. Just go ahead and hit Control shift t And go ahead and just select all those textures for that model, specific model that you downloaded. So I have it here. Its name is like... Um, uh, this, this, this name is... Um, New armor Centennial. I don't know what it is, but I'm just I'm just ex explaining it for you. But I think it's not loading perfectly. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and try to delete delete the texture, create a new texture here, and maybe I can hit Control Shift T, select the base color to the roughness color by hitting Shift, and it will select all of them in between. And now it will be loaded into our scene. And as you can see, that looks fine to me. Let's just come up to render and change the render engine. Uh, okay, so right now, let's save the file. Change the render to cycles and change the device to GPU compute for faster calculations. Click denoise so we can see perfectly in the viewport. So under film, let's click transparent so the background will be transparent. And for the plane, I'm going to go ahead under visibility. I'm going to click shadow catcher so it only catches the shadows from these other objects. So the lighting is off. Let's set the lighting perfectly according to the footage. How to do it? Let me explain. So first of all, you, you're going to go ahead and try to like just go into world settings. Just go ahead and click control. control. Let us create an environment texture here. Just connect this with the color and click open. Let's just go ahead into a directory where we have an HDRI. I will also put the link to HDRI also so you don't need to worry about it. So right now, I think it looks fine, but the angle of the solar sun is not correct. So let's just fix it. Uh, for now, I'm going to turn off the transparency. And as you can see, the sun is directing from the other side, but we don't want it to be from that direction. So I'm going to hit Control T and just try to rotate the sun on Z axis to finally catch it up. So let's just increase it to something like um, somewhere 55 maybe. Yeah, I think let's go into render. And yeah, as you can see, this is how it looks like. So let's just go into material. Okay, so for the plan material, I created an image texture, maybe a holdout. Okay, so this is how it turns out. So right now I'm going to go ahead and um, let's just select. I'm just trying to check it out, how it looks like, how it feels like. So that's why it's taking time. To render but I think that looks fine to me personally because I like it now you can add a crazy amount of objects into your scene to make it more dense and make it feel good and I think I will put the link to all the models that I found online so you can also check it out so I'm just trying to put all the texture together okay so that's looking good Okay, so let's just go ahead into Material Weave, and I don't know why it's what's happening right now. I think this texture, yeah, I think it doesn't look good, but I'm just going to put it here. I'm not going to be really serious about it, because I think it's a very random texture. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and connect this into a bump node, connect this into a normal node, just decrease the strength a little bit, just go into camera view slightly. Okay, so that's how it looks like. And if you play it, that is what it is. Um, I'm thinking about the ground, maybe we can change it. Like, I don't know what I have to like replace here, but... Okay, so if you go ahead and select... Let me just go ahead, select the plan here, go into camera view, go into material, just first go into the object and turn off shadow catcher for the plan here. Click slash to go into local view, click subdivide in edit mode to subdivide. And let's just go into material, click new material. And let's go edit mode, U and project from view. Click shift A, click uh, just search for image sequence, just Oh, it's not image sequence, it's a video, okay. So I'm gonna click Shift A and I'm gonna create a shader, a texture, an image texture. Connect this with the color and click open, open the video here. Hit control, select this both options, cyclic and auto refresh. Change the frames to like 460. And now it's time to fix some problems. So let's go into modifier, go into edit. Then click UV project, click the UV map and also the camera, 3D tracker camera. And now you can just play around with the aspects. I'm going to increase the X into 1.76 maybe. Yeah, that is fitting in there and this is what I wanted. So if you turn on the texture, we, can, we will be able to see it. Okay, so if you go into material, that's how it looks like. So what, we, what it does, it will actually reflect light into the other object, which will make them look really good. And the color will be matching from the ground. And this is what we wanted. So yeah, you can just make, make, make changes into it if you want. But I think that looks fine to me. And yeah, we can totally agree with that. You can play around with the roughness a little bit. You can just add some bump into it. So right now I think it looks a little bit flat, but I'm going to increase the opacity for the background. And yeah, I think it is flat. Just hit Control B to only focus on this area. Select the camera here. And uh, yeah. Okay. If you go forward in the timeline, this is how it looks like. The planet and the jet is taking off from the ground, and yeah, you can put any character in here. Uh, I will not make a full video like explaining every single character, but I will pu put the link to all the characters used in this video because I saved all of those, so I have the link to all of them. So that's why I'm gonna put all the links to you, so you don't have to try to find the best model, the good model. So this is what I come up with. I worked on the scene. I added some more model. I added some robot model. And that's it. Let's go into composition, compositing. And click use node. And I just created um, a glare node. Let's create an output node and connect the image to the image. Okay, so let's just go ahead and create um, another input. Uh, the color and mix alpha over. Just connect it up here and connect this to composite also. Click Add, click Input, click Movie Clip, and select your movie here by hitting Open. And just clicking Track and connecting it to the top socket. Yeah. It'll just connect it to here and this one to there. Okay, so that's how it looks like. Let's change the threshold for the glare so we don't have so much glow. Let's change the Make Simple to like something like 128 maybe for the final render because it's not going to be like a very huge scene so that's why and you can set up some motion blur maybe yeah under performance click persistent data and under format let's set this to like um, T format and set this to RGBA just go ahead and select a location that you want create a new folder and click accept to add this into it and yeah that's it that's the whole point. Let's you can just click render and it will render out the animation. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.